<laughs> All right, uh, welcome back. You are still hanging out with us uh, right here on uh, Why in the Morning. Remember, you can plug in on the hashtag Why in the Morning, everyone, all our social media platforms. That's on Facebook, Instagram, and on Twitter as well. Is at Y254 channel. And uh, remember, on Instagram is Y254 underscore channel. And personally, mine is at Brian Sakwa 101. And for those that are not seated in front of your TV screens, you can scream for free. Stream for free on www.kbc.co.ke forward slash Y254. Now, joining us live with us in studio is the reigning Mr. Wild Kenya, Franklin Asoyo. We're going to talk about matters, uh, community service and pageantry. We're going to also get to know him a little bit. How did he get into that space? How was his crowning moment? What are some of the life-changing things that, you know, have happened to him as well as that, those that he has managed to do, not only for himself and also others as well. So, uh, good morning to you. Good morning, Brian. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Nice to yeah. meet you in person. Yeah, now. Nice to meet you as well. Right. <laughs> and now, uh, be, 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 before, before we get to, to the business of uh, uh, pageantry and community service, which is like one of the main things even when it comes to pageantry, if you were to actually describe your Yourself. How would you describe yourself? Um, I'm just a simple guy. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah. So um, uh, um, 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 I'm outgoing. Um, I like to explore. Okay. And I believe, like Eliud, uh, no human is limited. Uh -huh. uh, our our limits are boundless, and you can right. be anything you want to be in this world. Uh -huh. Yeah. So that's me. I see. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, I'm, I'm trying to imagine your crowning moment before we get to, to, to how you got into it. Yes. I'd just like to know a little bit of your background. Uh, where did you grow up in? Where do you come from? You know, a lot of people will actually love to know because this is the reigning Mr. World yeah. Kenya. Like, yeah. I'm sure you, you've had a lot of successes as well. Yeah. Right. So, uh, it's funny because I, I didn't grow up in, like, I don't have one place I'd say I grew up in. Uh -huh. I was born in Eldoret then moved to Malindi, grew up in Malindi, then moved to Kapsabet, uh, grew up in Kapsabet, and that's where like, I spent most of, my, most of my life as a child growing up. So I um, um, then went to Kapsabet High School, um, finished, went to Jomo Kenyatta University, graduated, then that's when Mr. Wild Kenya came. All right. Yeah. So it, it, you have like a, a mixture of different experiences, experiences of, of and life. cultures, yeah. And, cultures as well. <laughs> and funny, uh, I've never grown up in my, in my, in my, in my like where 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 our our grandparents grew in my like home home. I've never grown up there. Right. Yeah. So, uh, but do, do you feel like it maybe disenfranchised you? Am I, you, you no. It's like, it is what it is. It is what this it is. is. Life, you know? <laughs> yeah, it is what it is. All right. Now, let's come now to the business of uh, pageantry and uh, community service. Uh, what exactly is pageantry for somebody who's watching and uh, like, you know, I want, to, I want to also be Mr. World Kenya, like uh, the way Frankie is. How do I go about it? And it's, it's all attributed to pageantry. Yeah. What exactly is it? So pageantry is what you, what you take it to be. Um, if it's about looks for you and you want to be a face model, you can be that. If you want to be a nails model, <laughs> right. you can be that. If you want to be a foot or feet model, you can be that. If you want to do projects, which is what I do, um, be of service to the community, it can be that to you. Right. So um, what's special about the Mr. Wild Kenya and Miss Wild Kenya pageantries um, is that they put much emphasis on community service and delivering projects that are close to your heart. All right. Yeah, so that's what pageantry is to me as Mr. Wild Kenya. All right. Mm -hmm. Before we get to the X factor mm -hmm. that made you got cr crowned for it, uh, did you always like maybe gravitate towards that line of you know profession? Because you know I, I think at some point we had a conversation. We were asking us ourselves, is it such a so serious profession? And you said yes, it's a serious <laughs> profession. It's what it's making me money. Yeah. In as much as you studied something different as mm -hmm. well. So um, now I didn't see growing up. I never thought I'd be a model because I didn't even think there was. I didn't even know the Mr. Wild Kenya platform existed. It's not until 2018 that then um, I saw the applications for Mr. Wild Kenya were open and I thought I'd give it a go. Right. Yeah. 
So um, it's not something really gravitated towards, just something that came. All right. Yeah. So, but you studied a different course. Yeah. yeah. I, I understand you studied uh, electrical, electrical, electrical engineering. engineering. Yeah, and you know, electrical engineering and pageantry, if you put those two on the <laughs> same, they are totally two different strange, <laughs> two different strange, you know, avenues. Yeah. Uh, how do you actually merge between that and what you are right now? So um, growing up, I had a passion for engineering as a whole. So even in my fifth year project, um, what I did is we made drones. Uh, drones? Yeah. Like filming drones? No, yeah, yeah, filming drones. Okay. Uh, or even, even security drones. Uh -huh. Yeah, they, they could do right about anything. All right. So that's where, that's where my passion was. But then um, in 2017, um, and I, I, I changed my trajectory in life because um, like we had this discussion earlier, I lost my dad to breast cancer and I felt like there was a need to create awareness around breast cancer, especially in men. Sorry for that. Because uh, men are not aware about it. Right. So mm -hmm. um, in 2017, after I lost my dad, uh, there was an opening for Mr. Jaquat because I studied in Jaquat. Uh -huh. uh, I did Mr. Jaquat and I won, so I became Mr. Jaquat. And the amount of impact created uh, around that was heavy. Uh -huh. So I thought um, if I could do this with Mr. Jaquat, what could I do with Mr. World All Kenya? Right. Uh -huh. So um, after I graduated in 2018, an opening for Mr. World Kenya came in 2019. So I was right. still job searching and Mr. World Kenya openings came. So I decided to go for it and right. lucky enough, I got it. Wow, congratulations and Thank here you. you are. Did you have like friends or people who are actually pushing you towards to apply? And if yes, maybe what are some of the things that they were making you to, you know, consider? Or what, what were the exact things they saw that, you know, Frank, if you do this, definitely you will win. So I have like three, three of my best friends in campus. Uh -huh. um, when the opening for Mr. Jake Watch came, they were like, Frank, why can't you try this? I was like, why do you see me as, as, as Mr. Jacot? And to them, they were like, because you're, you're tall and <laughs> right. you know, uh -huh. such things. Right. I was like, okay, give it a go. There's nothing to lose anyway. So yeah, there's like three of my friends, they pushed me towards it. But then now for Mr. Wild Kenya, it was solely me. No one knew about me applying for Mr. Wild Kenya until uh, a few days for the competition when I was inviting my friends and my family to come for the competition. Um, that's when they knew about it. All right. Mm -hmm. So that, that's how like, you know, you got solidified into it, you got the passion and <laughs> you, 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 you started like having it now as a serious profession. Yeah. So I, I think my passion with modeling grew with time. I, didn't, uh -huh. I can't say I came uh, into it uh, with passion. Right. I feel like it grew uh, in me as I did it. Right, as you started yeah. pursuing yeah. it. All right, be before we get to the X Factor moment, maybe what are some of the trainings that you did go through that uh, helped you along the journey to even get up to the crowning of the Mr. World? And uh, were you initially going by your name, Franklin Nasoyo? Ama you had like an AKA, like I'm Sunny name. <laughs> no, my name has always been Franklin Nasoyo. All right. So you've never, there's no AKAs uh, in the no, field as well. It's just me. <laughs> no, it's not like being an artist, a rapper. I'd, I'd like. love to have an AKA though, like artists <laughs> and rappers do. What would it be if you I had one, well, by the way? I mean, th what do you think it would be? <laughs> I, I love to think of it. I love to be creative enough. I don't know. I've just never given it much thought. But I'd love to have an AKA. You'd love to have an AKA. Yeah. <laughs> I'll right. think about it maybe after. All right. But so, yeah, um, to apply for Mr. World Kenya, there's certain height requirements you have to have. Um, uh, physical requirements such as, like, your height, your... your for, for men, it's not as, as, as serious as for women. Okay. Women have, like margins to the inch about like how your hips should be how your waist should be uh -huh. um so uh you have to have near perfect skin for both men and women near, near perfect, perfect skin. Uh, yeah near what? perfect dental this means you must uh, have a very stringent uh skin care routine, skin care routine <laughs> that means you'll never step into the sun you're always in an umbrella always in a car always moisturizing <laughs> so fortunately for those applying they're still in their younger ages and their skin is not as damaged as maybe people in the older ages who don't have like a regular skin routine. Right. So yeah, that's never a big problem for guys at that age. Right. Yeah. 
So um, some of the trainings you go through, um, good thing with Mr. with such a platform is uh -huh. before the competition, before your, you guys are crowned, two weeks before you go through Tara training, what we call a, a boot camp. So um, you meet every day for two weeks where you are trained on matters etiquette. Um, in etiquette, you're trained how to walk, how to talk, how to eat, how to <laughs> socialize. <laughs> it, I think it is the most visible part. Yeah. You know, you know just go, bro, grab a fork, eat, I'm going to use your hands. You know, like but it. then a fork uh -huh. and knife, using a fork and knife is not what most of us grew up knowing. Yeah, you know? sure, absolutely. Yeah. It's like a, it was like a white man thing or like more of an official, yeah. you know, yeah. modern and, thing. And for yeah. me, I never knew I'd even never use a fork and knife. You had never used a fork in life? I'd never used a fork and knife. Like <laughs> <laughs> one of those guys are like, Rachko, Gali, Nakula, Mboga, ITC. And that's it. Yeah. But now you have to be so courteous and so perfect. Yeah. And the reason is because um, after you're crowned, you are going to meet high profile people and dine with them. All right. You'll need, you'll need to have that sort of etiquette. Right. So aside from etiquette, you're trained um, on matters finance, how to manage your finances. Good. So there is uh, banks and finance gurus that come and talk to you. Um, you're trained on on generally how to carry yourself because that's what matters the most when you're in this position that I am. Right. So so that's, those are the sort of trainings uh, that are given to you. Uh, they expect of you to train yourself physically. You have to maintain yourself physically. Right. Obviously. There's no package like package. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that maybe package comes after now being crowned, Sindo. Like a package for uh, for like let's say self care, how to maintain yourself, move with your projects. Uh, now that comes after. After. And uh, the, what Miss Wild Kenya does is does is they partner with people to give you these packages that enable you to carry through your reign. Right. Okay. Interesting. I love the fact that you mentioned finance in this show. We talk about entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. And I love that, you know, you mentioned financial training. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about how your relationship with money <laughs> is, which is a constant <laughs> question on this show. Now, uh, let's get back to your crowning moment. Mm -hmm. And before that moment, what exactly was the X factor detail that led you to be crowned, that made you to be so outstanding, so unique and different from the rest of the contestants that you say this is what exactly the judges were looking for and this is the reason why I still deserve to be the still uh, reigning Mr. World Kenya. Yeah, so um, uh, Brian, it's, it's crazy because uh, around 200 people, men, um, apply to be Mr. World Kenya and around 600 ladies apply to be Mr. Wild Kenya. Wow, that's so, a huge um, number. After the applications are made online, uh -huh. what you do is they select like 100 of you for okay. both men and women. You're called for a physical audition. Right. And then out of that, they pick uh, 20 ladies and 20 men who now go into the boot camp for two weeks. Right. And during the two weeks, that's when they really make the observations on who deserves this crown. Because uh -huh. it's not it's not easy to to, <coughs> to put on a face or pretend to be someone you're not for two weeks. Yeah. Yeah. For one week it's possible, but for two weeks, uh -huh. it's not. People pretend yeah. for years, bro. <laughs> you can't. If, People if, pretend if, for years. If you're years, seeing each other for two weeks, uh -huh. trust me, it it, it becomes it, difficult. It becomes difficult. So, right? so what what you see is people put on a face for like a week, then one and a half weeks later, they're you tired. Just, yeah, you see the mask coming off. They're tired. Right. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh, and this so is for you. So so for 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 me for uh -huh. for Mr. World Kenya in general, general. Miss World Kenya in general, uh -huh. and those weeks, those two weeks are what really matters. Because now they strip you down, they strip everything down. Right. Because you have to meet every day from like 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. in the evening. And you have to maintain. Routine. That is Monday to, Monday to Friday. Monday, Monday to, to Friday, Monday to Friday. For That's like weeks. a job. That's a job. <laughs> <Full -time> job <laughs> so, yeah, um, uh, everyone, by the time you're getting to top 20, you, you are the, you're the cream de la cream. Ev right. Everyone deserves that crown. You okay. Know? So it's, it's a matter of like picking up the, the, the really neat small things, nitty-gritties in everyone. Yeah. So what I are some of these things, though? What are the nitty-gritties they look at? Apart from, you mentioned uh, even physical beauty is part of the... Physical beauty uh, is part of uh, it. Height, which we don't have control over, is part of it, uh, unfortunately, because it just allows you to stand out. Oh, th there's yeah. a standard height for every model? 
Yeah, be because um, for when you go to the international competition, you get really tall models as well. So you'd want to be just as competitive. Now right. they put a standard height for models as well in Kenya. Right. Yeah. F so for men, it's like five, nine, five, ten, or five eleven there about. Now for you, you're five. I'm six three. Six three. That's yeah. extremely tall. Though. <laughs> extremely yeah. tall. Yeah. Uh, uh, and then and then the physical beauty, your physique. Um, how you're able to articulate matters is one of the things that really matter. Right. How you're able to interact with people, people. because during the two weeks you're interacting with these other contestants as well. Right. Do you have leadership traits as well? Because they'll easily pick out who has leadership traits and who doesn't. Right. So those are the things that really, really matter. Right. Yeah. So for you, uh, what was that X factor that you'd say, this is the one that actually exactly made the judges <laughs> look at me and say, Mr. Franklin Osoyo, here you are, Mr. Wild Kenya. So I, I, I'd really love to, to, to know, but I wouldn't say really no, because um, I'd say there, was, there were guys who had better physics than me. Fortunately in la, in, enough, I was like the tallest guy. In the oh, you were the tallest among yeah. them all. No. Right. Uh -huh. uh, there were guys who, um, in my opinion, I, I would articulate issues better than guys. Uh -huh. uh, so I, I believe that's one of them. But right. these other guys had their A game as well. Right. So uh, um, it's, it's an accumulation of all these things put together. Right. I wouldn't say there's one thing that made me stand out. Because right. if it looks, every, by the time you're getting to the top 20, everyone is looking good as well. <laughs> yeah. Everyone is killing it. Everyone is killing it, yeah. Right. Yeah. Now, uh, uh, before we get to uh, the, the recognition and even your beauty, we, you call it Beauty with a Purpose, Purpose. Project. Yeah. Uh, you, have, uh, you have money to actually be recognized by a lot of people because mm -hmm. of, of the projects, but mm -hmm. let's get first to the finance part. Uh, in, this, <laughs> in this show, we talk about money a lot, and mm -hmm. uh, I usually ask my guests, uh, what is your relationship with money? Do you attract money? Does, is money attracted to you? Do you chase money or does money chase you for you? Are you uh, attracted to money? I, I love money. <laughs> you love money. I love it. I, I love, love it. I love it. I, love I think it. money loves me as well. Wow, amazing. <laughs> uh -huh. So uh, I, I, I try to attract it. I don't like to chase money. Okay. So I do things that make money uh, want me. Uh -huh. So like I, 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 I get a set of skills that make me special and then now people with money want to come to me and give me the money right. to, 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 to just put my skills outside there. Right. So that's how I like to think uh, about money. Right. Yeah. So in short, you, 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 you manifest, you know, they say manifest and become and attract. <laughs> uh, and work. And work, <laughs> you, right. manifest you, don't, work. you don't just manifest yeah. and sit and sleep, yeah. you so work and manifest. Right. Part of manifestation, I think, is just thinking about the things you want. Right. I think that's what people like to label as manifestation. But ah, then, true. Uh, yeah, Thinking uh, and not working and not putting uh, into yeah. action. But then everything starts with a thought if you think about it. Even having KBC, someone thought about let me have a station. And then right, they put yeah. the work to, to have it. Right. So um, every, every thought, which is now manifestation, counts. Then now putting the work towards manifesting your manifestations. <laughs> <laughs> All the fuck you manifest another manifestation. Yeah. Uh, now let's get to your projects. Uh, let me just shine the light on them a little bit. Mm -hmm. You uh, accelerated the COVID-19 vaccination campaign mm -hmm. following re-emergencies. Re and then you also did tackle vaccine hesitancy among the youth. That was during the pandemic mm -hmm. time. And then you also sensitized the youth on the importance of COVID-19 measures and also organized and spoke to a panel discussions together with health cabinet assistant secretaries at the National Youth Council. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, so that's why when you mentioned about COVID, when you asked how it was, I, I told you it was easy and not easy. Because right. as much as um, things went south during COVID, um, it was an opportunity for growth for uh, people. And for me, it was one of those opportunities to come out and present myself as a leader. So unfortunately um, enough, we worked with the Ministry of Health and I was part of the youth team, I was the youth lead um, to, to promote you know, vaccination and preventive measures against COVID. Right. So um, we managed to work with the ministry, with the cabinet assistant secretaries at that time. Her name was Masi Mongangi. 
a right. very brilliant and beautiful <coughs> lady right so right. um to to create awareness around covid prevent uh, prevention and the importance of taking up the vaccines all right yeah now let's get to now the beauty with the uh, purpose, purpose yeah. pro project you which you highlighted and we talked about before we come on now you are mm -hmm. passionate about breast cancer awareness mm -hmm. what exactly makes you to be so passionate about that so like i mentioned um, i lost my dad to breast cancer and I, at, until that moment i was in the university by the way at that time and until that moment i didn't know that men had breasts and could get breast cancer Right. So I thought to myself, if me, who's in the university taking an engineering course, doesn't right. know about this, then how many other people in, in the country and even in Africa don't know about this? Right. So I thought I'd take it up as a course to create awareness around breast cancer in right. men. Right. Um, so we've managed to reach a lot of people and every time I mention to a man that they have breasts and can, right. can get breast cancer, um, I see they're all in them. They, they, they never even believe it. Sometimes it comes up as awkward. They were like, what are you talking about? What are about? you talking about? What are you talking about? <laughs> breast, wh where breast at? <laughs> but so, it's true, right? Yeah, it's and I love true. the fact that uh, October is Breast Cancer breast Awareness Month. month. And, yeah. and, and I think yeah, that was yesterday where we talked about, you know, it is necessary to go for a checkup. Mm -hmm. And as much as you're just okay, mm -hmm. but at least just once, yeah. just once, at least at ila kujiskumia, end up with a for checkup. Yeah. But, you know, I don't know when it comes to men, it's usually like, you know, our checkups are a little bit awkwardish because, you know, they mention uh, other parts. I don't know. For men, how, how has it been uh, since you started advocating? Yeah. <laughs> bre breast cancer checkups for men are really easy to do. Right. Um, it doesn't take more than 10 minutes to get screened for breast cancer. Right. So all they do is they just uh, touch your breast and right. feel for lumps if there's any lump right. in your breast and that's it. Right. So um, they, re they recommend that you do that once a year. Okay. Now, if you decide to do that in October every year, you yeah. will certainly get the service for free because during Breast Cancer Awareness Month, there's hospitals that offer that service for free, a lot of them. Right. So part of my awareness campaign is just ask people to go get screened every October. Right. Yeah, it's as easy as that. It's not as difficult. So I think what you're talking about that was awkward is screening for prostate cancer. Exactly. Uh, that, that there is, you go. That, that's awkward. Exactly. I've never right. done it myself as well. Yeah. <laughs> but would you advocate for it like men important. to go and uh, get screened for prostate cancer? Because it's, 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 it's the deadliest of the cancers, though. It is. It is, it is, yeah. it is important, I think. Right. Because uh, if, if the earlier they get it, the better, it will, uh, the better the outcomes will be for you. Right. Yeah. So I think it's really important. It's really important mm -hmm. for that. And uh, which is your beauty with our purpose, purpose uh, project. project. Yeah. Now, uh, in terms of even choosing that, uh, how, how, how exactly is it done in the pageant that, you know, somebody at least must come up with a reason or a course that they are going to pursue? Is it part of the test? Yeah. So during the two week boot camp, you guys are asked to, to, to just articulate out what you think will be your pap will, will, your be, will be your beauty with the purpose project the moment you crowned. So right. every person during the boot camp at that time has a project in mind that they're willing to undertake in case they're crowned. It's mandatory. It is mandatory and it's part okay. of the test actually. Um, yeah. Uh -huh. So um, I, I just articulated my project that um, this is what I want to do and this is why. And I feel like the why is more important than the project itself uh -huh. because um, it's what pushes you. Because right. this is community service and there's no money you get out of community services, especially if it's coming from your heart. You have to All do right. it passionately and, and the why is really what matters. The why is what matters yeah. the most. So um, for every model, or you, you, you asked for someone who wants to be in my place, um, what is it they have to do? I feel like they have to have a passion for what they're doing. I know, I know it's a cliche statement having a passion, but okay. it's really important. Right. Yeah. It should be like impactful, life-changing, not only to yourself, but even to the community and the people around you. Yes. And it, nice. doesn't, it doesn't have to be like the whole world or a lot of people. If you can impact 10 or 20 people, that's still impact. Or even just one person. Even just one person. Yeah. So wha one, of the, one, of the, one of the best, one of the stories I like to tell okay. um, is um, one of my best friends. It's a lady. Uh -huh. During one of the screenings that we had we had created, right. um, she was she was she was she they found cancer cells on her breasts, and it was early 
they were just starting to form and early as, screening uh, yeah right. and as a result um it was they, they caught the cancer early enough uh -huh. so she's okay right now so she was treated and they managed to do away yeah. with it yeah so that's right. like one of my most proud moments because right. i was able to impact a person i know yeah yeah amazing mm -hmm. Amazing. Now, uh, the, 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 this whole crowning thing and uh, the whole entire career has, has gained you a lot of recognition. Mm -hmm. I understand you've met all the presidents and uh, I, I'd just really like to know like, how, 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 what was the criteria and how did it happen that you, know, you ended up meeting President Uhuru Kenyatta and now you've recently met the new president, William Samoya Ruto. Yeah. Is it because of the projects you have? Um, uh, there's usually like a process for pageants to, you know, go and uh, get into a, a certain package that will allow them to meet some of these influential profiles. So yeah. it comes with it as well. Yeah. So um, we're lucky enough to have a, a really amazing franchise director. Her name is Madam Terry Mongai. She is the franchise owner for Miss World Kenya and the CEO and, co and founder of Ashley's, Ashley's Kenya. So... Um, through her, um, we, we, we work under the Ministry of Health and Ministry of Youth Affairs. All right. So once you work with the Ministry of Youth Affairs and they see the efforts you're putting towards your projects, All right. uh, and they see that you deserve recognition, they right. give you the opportunity to meet these presidents All right. and, and, and for the presidents to acknowledge your work as well. All right. So uh, me meeting the presidents is as a result of my work and our connections to the Ministry of Youth. Right. And uh, what the presidents did, did for us is acknowledge our work and, and, and commend it. Right. Yeah. I think there's a photo right there of you and uh, that's, yeah. that's uh, President Uhuru Kenyatta, yeah. the former yeah. president. And then that is Sharon Obara. That's Sharon Obara. Right. And just next to Sharon Obara is Madam Terry Mungai, our franchise director. Oh wow! Uh -huh. And right to the pres next to the president um, is the former CS for youth, um, Amina Muhammad. All right. What and was then, happening here? Uh, that that's when we went to State House and met the president. Uh, okay. And for him to commend us on the job uh, right. we're doing. And then right. now this first photo is during the inauguration for um, the now president William Ruto. Right. Yeah. How, how did it feel, by the way, meeting both of them? Like, do you have maybe a, difference exper a different experience? Like, right. let's say, meeting Ruto and now previously, you know, meeting uh, outgoing president, Huru uh, 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 Kenyatta. Yeah. So, um, funny thing, I, and I think this is what everyone does. Uh, when you're told you're going to meet the president, you kind of have this picture of how formal you're supposed to be. All right. And, and, and how, how, how composed you'll be. And then you meet them and they're all chatty and they yeah. all want to fist bump. And you're right. like, okay, now I have to drop this, everything right. I had in mind, and now be chatty as well. <laughs> right. So the interactions become really organic, easy. right? Yeah, organic and easy. Right. Uh, uh, they, they, they speak to you about uh, the issues that you're carrying out and they're passionate about it. Right. Yeah, and they're always willing to support it. So right. it's been great. And especially with, 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 with pre the President Uhuru Kenyatta, he's so charismatic. Like he's very charismatic. He's very charismatic. And uh -huh. with, the pre with the now president, William Ruto, um, it's easy because we went to the same high school. <laughs> oh, wow, Kapsabit. amazing. So like Kapsabit the boys. Kapsabit boys. Now that's a really good entry point to start right. starting the conversation. To start a conversation. Yeah. Does a conversation start yeah. for you. Right. So who is the easiest in terms of personality and even the aura between uh, Ruto and who would say had an easy aura? I mean, I think it's both of them. It's really difficult to say who. Uh -huh. I think both of them are really charismatic because uh, President, President William Ruto has his own chatting style and same, uh, same to President Uhuru Kenyatta. And right. it's difficult to compare the same because they're different. Right. Yeah. Did that, uh, did that like make you, you know, did it like elevate even uh, your status? Because, you know, somebody meeting a president a lot of people have lived and died even our ancestors some of them have never met the president or even seen them did it like maybe was it a life-changing moment for you it was because um, for you to be called to state house or the president's office and for the president to tell you uh, congratulations and thank you for the work you're doing is a really big achievement okay that's why um, i like to say um some of the achievements i've had as mr wild kenya uh, I wouldn't have had them if maybe I'd gone into my engineering career straight okay, or anything. Right. Uh -huh. Yeah. 
So um, it, 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 it does, it elevates your status, it makes you feel good about yourself and it keeps you going. All right. Yeah. Apart from that, which other life-changing event that you've experienced where you say, hey, this one changed my life for good, apart from, you know, <laughs> meeting, of course, meeting the president is like, both president is the first, is the first. Which other life-changing experience have you gone through uh, that you would say, this one has changed me till right now, uh, I'm different because of that? Okay, for me, it's really little things. Uh -huh. Like one of the cabinet assi assistant secretaries went to Twitter and made a whole thread about um, how good I am at the work I do and how brilliant I am. Amazing. <laughs> that Look that was you. humbling uh -huh. and really life-changing. Uh -huh. And then one of my best moments uh, during my reign has been when we went to visit one of the breast cancer survivors. All right. Uh, what we do is we visit breast cancer survivors, talk to them, and we build corn gardens. Corn gardens are really little gardens that spiral upwards. And All on right. that garden, you can have like six or seven things just planted on that really little garden. Uh -huh. So we set those up for them. And just talking to this person and getting their perspective on life, um, they've had they've had cancer for like 20 years and they're still going strong and they're happy about it. Right. Those moments are really life-changing. They make you see uh, a part of life you you wouldn't have, have seen normally. All right. Yeah. Now, on that note also, what, that, what was that lowest moment that, you know, broke you? You'd say, this one, I cried. I'm seeing your navy <laughs> nearly Leah, by the way. As Mr. World, me with Leah. Uh, <laughs> You'd uh, say, he uh, lifanya nika Leah with Bayasan. Uh, I, don't, I never cry. Wongo, <laughs> wongo, insert, insert your sound. Wongo, wongo. I never cry. Uh, uh -huh. I get touched though. I get moved by things. Okay. But I don't know why I never cry. Okay. So um, uh, a lot of things have moved me. Uh -huh. But most of them have been uh, the interactions I've had uh -huh. um, during my, dur as I carry out my project uh -huh. during my reign. Those interactions have moved me. Uh -huh. uh, 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 to, to really get, they, they've wanted, they've made me want to give more and they've made me want to elevate more so that I can be able to elevate others as well. Right. Yeah. Lowest, I wanted exactly lowest moment. I like I this I one, Nili <laughs> I was depressed, <laughs> I was down, I needed motivation to gas me up and then I got back up. Or it could have been something you battled, because of course we are normal, bro. No, I, I, I feel like we all battle with imposter syndrome. Right. Do, do I yeah. really, I look at myself sometimes and I, feel, I, I think, am I really doing the best in my position? Do I really deserve to be Mr. Wild Kenya? Right. Yeah, so we, and I think it's, it's, it's generally what everyone has. Yeah. So um, I was talking to one of the cabinet secretaries at some point and I, this imposter syndrome topic came up. Right. And it was, it, it intrigued me that they too had the same thing uh -huh. going on for themselves they're right. like uh -huh. sometimes they think uh, do they deserve to be a cabinet secretary uh, yeah. it's like doubting yourself yeah. and, and and you know having to battle thoughts and yeah. emotions of whether am i really the one yeah. <laughs> when you wake up or when you sleep at night do you like sleep with you know that like hey but let me stuck in Mukuji Apasana. <laughs> you guys might hurt me. I'm the ready Mr. Walker. Does it come with that sort of a feeling sometimes and you're just extra cautious who texts you, who calls, where you hang out, some of the people that come to you? Does it also come with that as well? Uh, so there's a pressure to be Mr. So once someone hears you're Mr. Wild Kenya, right. they want to hold you to such a high, high esteem or high, high, high place. So right. um, there's a, the pressure that comes with that. Now that sort of pressure, I never like to deal with it. In okay. fact, I ignore it totally, All because right. um, I like to be myself. Right. Uh, I like to. I'm, I'm a really chatty person when it right. comes to <laughs> to being like real and one on one. Right. And I don't like to put on a facade. Right. So um. So you're real in short. Yeah. What you see is what you get. What you see is what you get. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, I can see there's a what what this this is a photo shoot. Uh, this was during last year's crowning of Miss World Kenya, now Sharon Obara. The oh, the Sharon also. Obara's reign now. Yeah, so I was a judge <coughs> during that event. Right. Yeah. Now this was uh, during that event, the red carpet for that event. 
And I love that outfit. It's yellow mixed with, uh, you'll also tell us about the one you've got. Yeah. It was, uh, it, that's almost like yellow, I don't know. It's gold. Oh, oh that's gold. Yeah. <laughs> mixed with uh, some good ensembled shoes right there. Yeah. Right. So what's the name of this outfit now? Uh, uh, there's a designer called Bolo Bespoke. Oh, Austin. Yeah, Austin, you know okay. him. Yeah. Uh -huh. He made that outfit. And then the okay. shoes are from Elufidia. Wow. They are similar to the this? Same thing. You've got? The same shoes I'm wearing. Wow. They're really expensive shoes. How <laughs> much? Speaking of expensive, Bola, how much are these? Uh, <laughs> of course, I Peter Gates. <laughs> of course, I Peter so, Gates. Sometimes I'm wearing them, like, should I sell them? Or should I? Yeah. Why am I stepping on money? <laughs> yeah, bro. Please. Oh, man. How oh. much? Just roughly. Uh, they were given to me, and I was like, oh, oh, are you, are you this sure? This was you a present. Yeah, no, Elufidi, I gave them to a me. A gift, yeah. 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 Wow. So they cost like it fifty dollars. Wow, that's a lot of money right yeah. there. <laughs> Look at the advantages <laughs> this guy is enjoying, bro. Bro, you have so many advantages and privileges. By the way, do you like get people gift you stuff from the UK, US? You get emails from even international organizations saying, "Hi, we'd like to meet you." Blah 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 blah. Yes, uh, I do. You get a lot of that. Yeah. But then uh -huh. now they have to come. To, they have to meet my criteria for who I work for because I'm, right. I'm under contract. Oh, you're under contract yeah. because and it's an organization. And they have a management. So right. if contract. Yeah.